That was the goal number one. It's all you four mother sponge out. That was the day. It's June 30th, 2001. And today we're going to focus, of course, on Invest 97L. And we'll talk a little bit about Invest 95L. So does Invest 95L have a chance to impact the United States? Will it develop into a tropical storm or a hurricane? I won't answer those questions in this video. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather accounts. Make sure to like if you like this video. Make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather accounts. So let's begin by taking a look at the water vapor imagery for Invest 97L and you see that it looks a slightly a bit more organized and focused than it was yesterday because yesterday thunderstorms were a little bit more scattered all around but now we're starting to see that convection focus right around one area it still isn't entirely there still isn't a um, large area of convection just yet or thunderstorm activity focused in one area just yet. However, it does look a little bit more compact than yesterday. And we're seeing that thunderstorm activity most prevalent on the northeastern side of this storm where we do see um, a little bit of rotation here, but not enough to warrant it being a tropical depression or tropical storm yet. And it still has ways to go before we could really say it's well-defined a uh, well-defined tropical storm since there's still a dry air on the northwestern side of this storm and the thunderstorm activity is still somewhat scattered so while it does look slightly better than yesterday there's still ways to go because we need to start seeing convection on all sides of the storm and a focus area of convection before we could determine if there's a tropical depression or not now in terms of the national hurricane center's chances of developing this the chance is now high and has risen considerably since yesterday over the next 48 hours the chance is medium um, with um, around a 60% chance so within the next two days there's a pretty good chance we could see tropical depression 5 or tropical storm Elsa and um, however within the next five days it becomes very likely we're gonna see some sort of tropical depression or tropical storm with a high 80% chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next five days and you see and um based off of this you see how large of an area this goes um this all this extends all the way to the caribbean islands um such as the Dominican republic haiti and jamaica so this is going to move quite fast um to the west um as it's going to move west northwest at around a 20 mile per hour clip which is a little bit faster than the average which Typically, um, storms coming off the African coast go around 15 miles per hour. So it is going a little bit faster than average. And now the computer models are detecting this does have a higher chance of development than before. Um, taking a look at what the GFS model is forecasting with this storm, uh, taking a look at the precipitation map. Um, the GFS now is a low, is definitely a lot. The GFS forecast is definitely a lot more concerning than it was in prior days or prior months i mean prior runs because um because if we were to take a look at the gfs model the gfs is really being on developing this really quick by i'd say right around the 24 to 48 hour mark it already develops this into a tropical storm at 998 millibars which is equivalent to a low end tropical storm right there and if we were to continue to move forward the gfs model continues to strengthen it drops the millibar pressure down to 991 millibars which represents that the storm is indeed getting stronger and drops to as low as 988 millibars just off the coast of dominican republic and it has a really good chance of making landfall depending on the exact track of it and drops down as low as 987 which is a pretty which is a pretty um, strong tropical storm at that level. I'd say right around 60 miles per hour to maybe even going up to 70 miles per hour, maybe a borderline category one hurricane, but um, especially since it has small circulation where the air pressure is where the winds are a little bit faster in a smaller circulation. So as a result, um, this, the GFS model is developing this quite rapidly and the gfs model eventually does weaken it to low end tropical storm status as it goes over um dominican republic and haiti which is expected because there's a, t a lot of high ele um higher elevation elevated areas in hispaniola and that creates and that creates friction within um and the it pretty much blocks the wind and convection from occurring 
um, because there's so much friction imposed by the mountains of Hispaniola. And if we are to continue to move forward, you see it may, remains relatively weak. But again, the GFS model um, does expect it to re-strengthen um, as it heads off of Hispaniola and could potentially be a United States threat as a tropical storm in the long term future so keep in mind i'm going seven days out with this forecast right now so it's still way too far to say with certainty what the united states um what impacts the united states will experience because we're still seven days out and it's even more uncertain because the other um, reliable computer model isn't really leaning on bringing a sh very strong tropical storm at all beyond the three day mark because if we were to take a look um this is invest 97l this is invest 95l which i'll talk about in a little bit but the focus will be invest 97l because it does have a higher risk to impact more people and um has the potential of becoming stronger than invest 95l well, it's pretty much inevitable it's going to be stronger than 95L, but you see that the European, while there is certainly um, cyclonic vorticity headed into the 48-hour mark and even extending the 72-hour mark, you see that by the time um, Invest 97L reaches Hispaniola, it pretty much weakens and there isn't much cyclonic vorticity after that and there really isn't much at all as the European pretty much just kills the storm beyond the three to four day mark once it reaches Hispaniola. However, it seems like the European is still leaning on strengthening this into a tropical storm, but it doesn't expect it to go as far as the GFS model, where the GFS model is taking quite a potent tropical storm to the United States, while the European model pretty much weakens it and kills the storm just before it reaches Hispaniola, which would certainly be the better case scenario if the european were correct but it really but since uh, both the computer models are in pretty large disagreement of the strength of this storm beyond the five day mark um you um you see that um there's still just very um that means that there's very high uncertainty when both the computer models are having disagreements with each other however it seems like within the next three to four days the certainty remains high that this will develop into a tropical storm so lesser antilles certainly needs to start preparing for tropical storm conditions because i do think it's likely at this point and even hispaniola and puerto rico certainly need to pay close attention to this and i do believe that they should start preparing for tropical storm conditions as well um it's still uncertain the track is still uncertain where exactly this will go it really all depends on this the position of this ridge bermuda ridge that's in the middle of the Atlantic, if it if it's a little bit further southward, that means the track will be a little bit further southward, and it'll avoid a lot of the Caribbean islands, which would certainly be the better case scenario. However, if it were to move a little bit northward, that means that of course more of the Caribbean islands will be impacted more. So the track is still um, uncertain. However, it seems like the computer models are lenient, are are pretty much. Um, are pretty much in agreement that we're going to see some sort of impacts in Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and even into Cuba, whether this is a tropical storm or not. And I do think it's going to be likely, it's more likely than not, we're going to see some sort of uh, tropical storm very close to Hispaniola and Puerto Rico at this point. So in those areas, I, I'd prepare for tropical storm conditions. If you live near a river, you should prepare um, for some flooding because this certainly could bring enhanced rainfall. And if you're along the coast, Make sure to stay off the beaches because there is certainly going to be a high rip current risk and also watch out for coastal flooding because that's certainly possible even with only a tropical storm so keep that in mind in the caribbean islands in terms of what the um ensemble members are saying right now um this is the um gefs ensemble um, um ensemble members and you see that um, the they're all leaning on strengthening this into a pretty strong tropical storm, maybe a low, and in some cases a low end hurricane just before it reaches the Hispaniola area. But you see a lot, the majority of the computer models are taking it just south of Hispaniola, 
But you need to keep in mind the northeastern side of the storm is always going to be the strongest, the largest wind field. And it will likely be the area where most of the precipitation will occur. So even if this moves just to the south of Hispaniola, you guys still will experience impacts. And even um, and head further northward, the, uh, the good news is that the ensemble members do weaken it just before it reaches the United States. But there's again, there's still a lot of uncertainty because we're still seven days out with it. And we need to keep track of how the storm um, moves and develops. On what, uh, once it reaches the Caribbean Sea because that will be very important in determining what sort of impacts the United States will experience but it seems like a lot of the computer models are leaning towards being, steering this north to where Florida may get impacted and maybe even other states in the southeast such as the Carolinas and Georgia might get impacted however there is still a decent chunk of, com chunk of computer models um, headed towards the Gulf of Mexico so do not let your guard down just yet in the Gulf of Mexico, since there's still certainly time for the forecast to change. Um, but um, you see that a lot of these develop this into a tropical storm, which seems likely at this point. But beyond Hispaniola, it doesn't, as of right now, it doesn't seem like it has much potential to develop. If we were to take a look at the European model, um, ensemble members, you see that the European model is a lot less lenient in developing this, where it it pretty much um, thinks the storm is gonna stay at around 30 to 40 knots, um, which is equivalent to a weak tropical storm, I'd say, right around 40 to 45 miles per hour the, the whole way through. And um, you see that um, while the track is very similar to GFS, taking it most with most of them taking it just south of Hispaniola, the strength is st still has yet to be seen, which is very important when determining the impacts for um, the, not only the Caribbean islands, but potential impacts for um, the United States in the future. So this, so this is something we need to keep in mind. The point is Caribbean, the Caribbean islands need to prepare for tropical storm conditions for flooding because it is likely at this point. And the United States, I'd say at least just be aware of this storm because there could be a possibility you might see a tropical storm in Florida but there's still a lot of uncertainty, but um, in the Caribbean islands, I'd say definitely prepare for tropical storm force conditions because they are likely. In terms of what will determine the strength of this storm, um, we need to take a look at the wind shear. You see that the wind shear is, is still a little strong in the Caribbean islands. However, the GFS model is now thinking that the, the wind shear won't be as big of a problem with this storm, which will certainly make it strengthen more. And... Um, and if the wind shear is less than usual, then that would mean that we're gonna you would see a stronger storm. Um, you see that the wind shear isn't very light. There is certainly a little bit of wind shear, um, but it thinks that. But now the GFS model is seeing that this storm will move just slow enough to where it'll have a full circulation, and the sun inside this storm will get strong winds as well. Um, and moving forward you see that the wind shear one of the things that might limit this storm from developing in the united states is the limited wind um the amount of wind shear and it really all depends on this position of this upper level low if it's a little bit closer and a little bit stronger then it's less likely we're going to see a strong tropical storm or a tropical storm at all in the southern southeastern united states however um if the upper level low is non-existent like this there is that possibility we could see a pretty strong tropical storm or maybe even a hurricane in the southeast United States but you just need to wait and see just a lot of uncertainty um, um, but I will make sure to update you guys as we get continue to get more updates in terms of the um, forecast and humidity for um, for the Atlantic during um, during um, invest 97 L um, you see that um, moving forward with this um you see that there there while there is will be a little bit of dry or just some of it this storm the gfs model is expect this storm to be moist enough to where it'll um it'll pretty much strengthen despite the dry air however later you see the dry air begins to filter in on the western side of this storm which may limit its potential on developing which will be another key in determining whether this develops or not and you see that um that eventually it does reach a moist area in the southeast so it could develop um, but we need to wait and see how the forecast changes over the next several days in terms 
of my in terms of my forecast keep this in mind that this is just my speculation and for um to make decisions seek um consult like the national hurricane center um go um and use their guidance this is just my speculation based on what i am seeing with the computer models and i do expect this to develop into a tropical depression thursday morning and then into friday i do eventually expect it to develop into a tropical storm and then saturday morning i do expect it to be right around 55 miles per hour because the gfs model is the only on bringing a very strong tropical storm in this region while the european is more on the weaker end so i decided to pick an average between the two and the average comes out right around 55 mile uh 55 mile per hour storm right um in saturday morning then sunday morning um it should weaken a little bit thanks to land interaction and like i said the dry air that might be towards the west of this storm and then i do expect it to weaken a little even more once it heads to cuba because all the computer models seem to agree that this will weaken rapidly um besides the gfs um besides the gfs model so i do expect the um weekend to tropical depression strength by monday morning but there is that potential it could be strengthened headed more northward and this does have a chance to impact the united states as a tropical storm but we need to just wait and see but anyways guys i think guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather because make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather because i hope you guys have a good day